Hello everyone, my name is Se Zheng. Welcome to my dissertation defense titled Reconstructing CD Humans from Visual Data. As humans play a central role in visual content, it is crucial to understand humans in images and videos for revised human-centric application. CD human pose estimation which aims to predict the location of the human body joints in 3D space. And human mesh recovery, which aims to estimate the 3D pose and shape of the entire human body. And in this presentation, I will show the human pose estimation as the HPE and the human mesh recovery as the HMR. HPE and HMR can be utilized by the revised human-centric applications, such as action recognition, prediction and tracking, animation, moving and gaming, AR, VR, AI coaching, virtual try-on, spot analyze, and healthcare. For the overview, uh, first I will talk about the video-based 3D HPE, which is my work, Postformer. Then we will cover the HMR. So for the image-based HMR, I will talk about my work, filter, and the border. Next, for the video-based HMR, I will talk about my work, diff mesh. And finally, I will discuss about the future work. Okay, so for my first work, the video-based CD HPE the Postformer, transformer-based network for 3D human pose estimation in videos. This is published in the ICCV 2021. Before introducing our method, here I want to briefly uh, give the background information about the 3D HPE. The 2D to 3D lifting approach has become the dominant approach for the 3D HPE, which means Give the input videos. An off the shelf 2D post detector will be used to extract a 2D post sequence. And then a 2D to 3D lifting network will be designed to output the final 3D post sequence. Compared to raw RGB videos, 2D post sequence offer two key advantages. First, it bridges the domain gap between images and the 3D joints location, providing task-relevant positional information crucial for 3D HPE. Second, the 2D pose sequence is lightweight, which enables the utilization of long-term temporal cues, leading to enhanced estimation accuracy. For example, current SOTA methods can even use more than 300 frames as their input. Previous methods utilized recurrent neural networks or employed temporal convolutional neural networks to capture the dependencies from the adjacent frames. However, either they constrain to the simply sequential correlations or they have the limited temporal connectivity. Transformer, which is from the neutral language processing, the self-attention mechanism allows for capturing the global correlations across long input sequence. The potential of the transformer for 3D HV remains largely unexplored at that time. Thus, we proposed the first transformer network for 2D to 3D lifting approach. Here is the architecture of our postformer. So after extract by the 2D post detector, we can got the 2D post sequence. And then we apply the spatial transformer, which encodes the relationship between human body joints. And we treat each frame individually. And each joint, we will treat them, uh, treat them as the patch. And after the patch embedding, with adding the spatial positional embedding. A spatial transformer encoder can return the encoded features of this, of this frame. 
And after getting all the embedding features of each frame, we can add the temporal conditional embedding. And we apply a temporal transformer encoder to capture the global dependencies across all the frames. And finally, a regression head can return the CD pulse for the center frame. Um, here we show the result on the human 3.6M dataset. Um, we report the mean per joint position error, which is the MPJPE. This measures the distance between the ground truth uh, 3D joints and our estimate ground truth uh, and our estimate 3D joints. And you can see here our postformer achieved the best the lowest average and PJPE at that time. And we also showed performance uh, on the image uh, on the in the wide videos. This video is taken from the YouTube and it can achieve quite good performance. Uh, for the infant speed, it can uh, achieve around 30 FPS on a single GTX 2080 Thai GPU. Yeah, since we introduced the 3D HPE, we extend our research to the HMR. Um, HMR task is much more challenging than the 3D HPE uh, because for the 3D HPE, we only estimate the skeleton, the joints, but for the HMR, we need to estimate the entire mesh vertex of the human body. Next, I'm going to talk about my work. Feature. Human mesh reconstruction in images with a feature map-based transformer network. This work is published in the CVPR 2023. Transformer-based method achieved the SOTA performance on HMR task. The long-range collisions between patches can be captured, which is crucial for modeling the dependencies of the different human body parts. Here we show the general pipeline of the transformer-based method. First, we have the image. And we can use an uh, off-the-shelf CN backbone to extract a stack of the feature maps. And then the transformer network is proposed to capture the global dependencies across these feature maps. And finally, we use the mesh head, which is the simple human body model to return the final human mesh. Uh, if we look at this pipeline, so after extract by the CN backbone, we have got a stack of the feature map with the size NHW, which means we have N feature maps. And for each feature map, the size would be the edge times W. In order to possess by the transformer network, we need to flatten these features to the ND and go through the transformer. So we can got these outputs still would be the ND. And we need to convert it back to the feature map representation. And here is one limitation. The Velena transformers, such as VIT, are limited to work with the flattened feature maps. The flattening process leads to a large embedding dimension, resulting in the computationally expensive transformer. And here we show the computational cost in multiply add accumulation, the max. And one Valenda transformer block given the input nd requires 8 nd squared plus 2 n squared d max. And for example, given the input feature maps 32, 64, 64, this is extracted by the HRNet. 
the Valena transformer block need to flatten these feature maps to the 32, 4096, and this require 4.3 billion max. And even shrink to the 32, 1024, it still requires 0 0.3 billion max. And for our solution, we propose a feature map based transformer architecture. In the high level idea, we adopt the dimensional decomposition strategy to handle the feature map in transformer. So here is the Valena transformer. We have the feature map input with the size NHW. We need to flatten this to the ND. And then we can got the QKV with the size of the ND. And for here, the Q times K transpose is the N by N attention matrix. And we following this equation, we can got the output of the attention, which would be the ND. And for our feeder, so first we just need to reshape the original uh, inputs NHW to HNW. And we just apply the attention for the W wise. So, which means we can got the QW, KW, VW. And here, if we directly calculate the QW times KW transpose, we can got the output of the H and N. So, here we still have the N by N attention matrix. And we following this equation, we can got the output of the H and W. And similarly, we can um, calculate the attention for the H wise. So for here, we have the QH, KH, VH. And for here, if we calculate QH times KH transpose, we can still get this W, N, N. So here is still N by N attention matrix. And we following the same equation here got the output with the size W and H. So what we need to do is just we need to reshape them and apply the element-wise addition. So it will return the final output, which would be the NHW. This is with the same size as the input here. The advantage is we significantly reduce the computational cost. So go back to this uh, computational comparison. And the one feature block given the input NHW requires this number of the max. And when H equals to W and D equals to H times W, this can be rewrite as the 6 and d c over 2 plus 9 n squared d. Since in our cases, the n usually is much smaller than d, so basically we can say we reduce the computational cost from the big O d squared to the big O d c over 2. And go back to this example. Our feature only requires 0 0.09 billion max without flattening and shrinking. So here's the overall framework. We will use the off-the-shelf CNN backbone to extract the features to get a stack of the feature maps. And our feature can capture the global dependencies across these feature maps. And finally, the mesh head, here we use the simple human body model to return the final human mesh. And we report the uh, experiment result on human 3.6M and the CDPW datasets. Uh, for the MPJPE we introduced before, which is the mean per joint position error. The PA MPJPE is the MPJPE after the post alignment. And MPVE is the mean per vertex error. And as we can see here, our feature outperformed the SOTA method by requiring only 5% of the parameters and 16% of the max.
Here we conduct a vision study on the transformer design for HMR task. So if we do not use any transformer block, which means this kind of the stack feature maps directly fit into the human mesh head, which would be the simple human body model, we can see the result would be like here. And if we use the Velenda transformer, which means given the um, stack of feature map with the size 32, 64, 64, this need to be flattened to the 32, 4096. And we can see here, although the performance can be improved, but it will require large parameters and the max. And if we shrink this large embedding dimension uh, from the 4096 to the 1024, um, although these parameters and the max can be reduced, but the performance is quite worse. And for our filter block, we can see here, our filter significantly reduce the computational cost without sacrifice the performance. So it can achieve the comparable performance compared with the Valena Transformer L. And here we show the in the wide image visualization. Given the image, our filter can output reliable city human mesh. And there are the different reviews of the our generated mesh. The inference time would be around 25 FPS on the one NVIDIA RTX 5000 GPU. And here we show the uh, visual comparison with the SOTA HMR method Metro. This red circle area highlights that our feature works much better than the Metro. Okay, next, I'm going to cover the uh, Potter, which is still the image-based HMR. The end-to-end -end transformer based method for the uh, for the human mesh recovery. This paper is published in the CVPR 2023. And in this work, we also focus on the model efficiency. As as we mentioned before, the previous methods, uh, the previous transformer based method, there are computationally and memory expensive. For example, for the current SOTA method metro, they need a large CNN backbone requiring uh, 128 million parameters and 29 G max. And for their transformer block, they still need 102 million parameters and um, 27 G max. So we can see here, the overall computational and the memory are extensive. And for the inference speed, um, they are around 15 FPS on one single RTX 5000 GPU. And our goal is to propose an end-to-end -end and efficient model for the HMR, which means only the lightweight transformer network is needed here, and the human uh, and the mesh head can directly output the human mesh. And the question is how to achieve the SOTA performance while significantly reduce the computational and the memory cost. Since the transformer block are typically computationally and memory intensive, we propose a lightweight transformer block. And second, we design a better transformer architecture, which is more suitable for the HMR task. Okay, so for the first point, we can see here, uh, under the, the attention-based methods, such as the VIT or the swing transformer, or the MLP-based method, such as the MLP mixer, 
this attention of the spatial MLP block all require uh, large parameters and the max, which would be the computationally and the memory intensive. And to address this issue, our motivation is from the poor former, which is the CVPR 2022 oral paper. This paper proves one pooling layer is enough to achieve the competitive performance and even consistently outperform the well-tuned transformer and MLP-like models. So they say they do not need the attention. Just one pooling layer is enough. And as a lightweight model, the performance of the performer on the image classification task is impressive. So can we directly use the poor former for our HMR task? Uh, however, HMR task need to focus on the fine grain details. If we directly use the poor former, we can see here the performance is not good. And can we improve the performance without increasing the computationally and the memory cost? Thus, we propose our pooling attention transformer block. So compare to the pool former, which they only need one pooling layer. Our pooling attention block uh, here gives the inputs with the size D, H, W. Here, the total number of patches would be N equals to H times W, and the embedding, uh, embedding dimension would be D. For here, we use two pooling layers. The first one, we shrink the edge wise, so it will become to the D1W. And another pooling layer shrink the W wise, so it will become to the DH1. And we multiply them together, it will become back to the DHW and go through another projection layer, get the output of our pooling attention block. So here we uh, also adopt a similar dimensional decomposition strategy, um, same as our previous method feature. Okay, so for the second point, we design a better transformer architecture, which is suitable for the HMR task. Given the input image with the size H times W, if we use the VT style framework, go through the patching batting and the attention block, it can return to the low resolution features with the size D, H divided by 16, W divided by 16. Um, although these uh, features is good for the image classification, but it's not good for the HMR task because we need to focus on the fine grain detail. And if we use the swim style framework, given the input with the size H times W, after the patching batting, first we can have the high resolution local features, which would be the size D1, H divided by four, W divided by four. But after four stage, it will become to the low resolution global features with the size D, H divided by 32, W divided by 32, because in each stage, there is a patch merging block here in the swing transformer. Still, this low resolution global features is not good for the HMR task. So, here we proposed our architecture. Basically, we have two streams. So for the basic stream, this following the uh, swim style framework. So we have the high resolution of, uh, local features and after four stage, it will become to the low resolution global features. And for our 
high resolution or stream, we will maintain this high resolution representation all the time. Um, to achieve this, we will have the patch split block after each patch merging block here. Thus, we can always maintain this high resolution representation. And in the end, we can got these high resolution local and global features with the size D, H divided by four, W divided by four. And this contains the fine grain detail, which is most suitable for the HMR task. So here's the overall framework for our proposed pattern. So we have two stream. For the basic stream, uh, it can generate the low resolution global features, but we still have the high resolution, uh, high resolution of stream. And in the end, we can high, we can get the high resolution global and local features. And for the transformer block here, we use our proposed pooling attention transformer block to reduce the computational cost. And we evaluate our pattern for the HMR task on the human 3.6M and CDPW dataset. And our partner outperformed the SOTA method by requiring only 7% of the max and 14% of the 17% uh, of the parameters and 14% of the max. Okay, for the ablation study, first we evaluate the different modules in the transformer block. Uh, if we directly use the pooling, which means uh, which is would be the pool former, you can see the performance is like here. And if we use our proposed pooling attention design, we can see here all the MPJPE, PA MPJPE, and MPV can be improved. Also, this is validated by the visual example with the pooling layer. Um, the affairs in some details like here, but with our proposed pooling attention, it can capture the more accurate CD human mesh. The next one is uh, we evaluated the high, re high resolution of stream. So without the high resolution stream, the performance is like here. And with the high resolution of stream, also, all the MPJP, PA and PJP, and MPV can be improved. And this is also validated by the uh, image examples. So without the high resolution of stream, uh, we can see here, uh, especially for this food area, the performance is not good. But with our proposed high resolution of stream, we can capture more accurate human mesh here. We also compare it to the previous SOTA method metro. And in the red, uh, red circle area highlights that our partner works much better than the metro. And for the inference, uh, for the inference speed, they are around um, 29 FPS on one RTX 5000 GPU for our partner. And we can even generalize to the 3D hand uh, mesh reconstruction, just replace the human mesh head to the hand mesh head. Okay, next, I'm going to introduce the video-based HMR, which is our work, Diff Mesh a diffusion-like framework for human mesh recovery from videos. Compared to image-based methods, video-based methods can utilize the temporal information to improve their performance. This addresses the issue of the motion jittering that arises with the frame-by-frame -frame reconstruction. 
Before introducing our method, here I'm going to uh, give a short information about the background. The diffusion models has shown the strong capability to produce samples that match to a specific data distribution driven from the input data sets. And here is, here is the example. We can give a text input. A person walks forward, bends down to pick up something up off the ground. And using a diffusion model, MDM, which is the ICLR 2023 paper. This can generate the high quality human mesh motion. And this inspired us to consider the diffusion model as a promising solution for recovering the high quality human mesh from the input videos. And here I will briefly introduce the diff diffusion model. Give the input image, we can say this is x0. For the forward process, we will add the noise to this original image x0 to x1 and add the noise step by step. And finally, after n step, it can become to the pure Gaussian noise which it would be the X end. And our goal is to recover the high quality image from the, this pure Gaussian noise during the reverse process. So we will denoise this step by step. And finally got these high quality images. And this denoising process is achieved by the diffusion um, neural network. It is straightforward to apply the diffusion model for image-based HMR, such as in the recent ICCV 2023 paper. So we have the input image, and we have the ground truth mesh of this image. And we can got the uh, human body model parameters, which would be the simple parameters, x0. So for the forward process, we add the noise to this x0 step by step. And finally, after n step, we can got a pure Gaussian noise xn here. And for the inference, what we need to do is we were starting from this pure Gaussian noise to recover this high quality um, human mesh. So for the denoising step, the image input can be served as the conditional features to this denoising. And we can perform this denoising step by step. And we can got this x prime zero. So which is our estimate human body parameters. And finally, it can be returned to the human mesh output. While it is straightforward to apply the division model for image-based HMR, how can we apply the division model for video-based HMR? And here we introduce two diffusion baselines for video-based HMR, as there are no existing methods using the diffusion model for our task here. And then we propose our method, diffmesh. Okay, so for the first baseline, it is uh, it's quite straightforward. We just need to perform the division model frame by frame. If we have the um, sequence with F frames, we just need to repeat this for the F times. Um, there are some uh, limitations of this baseline one. The so first, it suffer from the significantly computational burden because for each image, the total numbers, uh, the number of steps would be n. 
And we need to repeat these F times because we have the F frames input. And second, the diffusion model does not account for the motion smoothness in the dynamic sequence, which may result in the temporal inconsistent mesh output. And next, we propose the baseline two. Since we have the input sequence with F frames, we can got the ground truth match sequence. And we can got the corresponding uh, simple human body model parameters, X1 to the XF. And what we need to do is just to concatenate this X1 to XF as the joint parameters X, X0. So we just performed the conventional uh, diffusion model. We add the noise during the forward process with n step, and it will become to the pure Gaussian noise. And our goal is to recover this uh, human mesh from these uh, pure Gaussian noise. And here, the input sequence can be served as the conditional features. So we will denoise this step by step. And finally, we got this x prime zero, which is our estimate uh, human body model parameters. So we just need to partition these to the features, uh, to the parameters of each frame. And it will return to the output match sequence. And we can see here, the total number of the steps would be n. So although we address the first limitation, the total number of steps from the f times n to the n, but it does not effectively model the human motion during the denoising process, which may result in the temporal inconsistent mesh output. And can we consider the inherent motion patterns when utilizing the diffusion model? And compared to the conventional diffusion, here we propose the motion array diffusion. We have, uh, for example, we have the uh, ground truth mesh of the first frame and ground truth mesh of the second frame. So we can got the simple uh, parameters x1 of the first frame and the simple parameters x2 of the second frame. Here, we assume that human motion consistently influences the human mesh across the frame, which is similar as the introducing noise. So it can be right as the x2 equals to a function of the x1 with the motion term of uh, this motion term x1 is the motion from the first frame to the second frame. And this is similar to the introducing noise in the conventional diffusion. And our goal is to reverse this motion step by step. So here, uh, we were starting from the first frame with the motion of the first frame to the second frame, it can be, becomes to the second frame, x2. And with the forward motion, can be uh, returns to the x3. And gradually, we assume the human motion eventually end at a static state, which we call the initial distribution. And for the inference, our goal is to recover the entire human mesh from this initial distribution. So we will reverse the motion step by step during this reverse uh, process. So here we show the architecture of our proposed diff mesh. Given the input sequence with F frames, 
So we have the uh, ground truth mesh of these all F frames, X1 to the XF. And it requires F minus one steps from X1 to achieve the XF. And we do not stop here because we assume human motion eventually end at a static state, which would be the initial distribution. And here requires additional n minus f plus one steps. So for here, the total number of steps will be still n here. And for the inference, we were starting from this uh, initial distribution. And we will reverse the motion step by step. And for here, uh, since we have the input, uh, input uh, videos with F frames, so we will use the backbone and the conditional feature generation, uh, gen generation to get the conditional features from C1 to the CN. And for each reverse process, we will denoise to the previous states by using these conditional features. So it will be reverse the motion step by step. So here we got the X prime F, which is our estimate simple parameters of the F frames. And we still continue to do this. And finally, we can got this output match sequence from the first frame to the F frames. And here we show the performance comparison on the CDP double data set. And here, um, MPV is the mesh error, and MPJP is the joint error. And acceleration error indicates the motion smoothness. And we can see here for our baseline one, um, because we apply the division model in frame wise, so the total processing time would be much expensive. And um, for our baseline two, since we concatenated features of all the frames and apply the diffusion model, we can see here, the total processing time can be greatly reduced, but the performance can be further improved. And for our proposed deep mesh, since we consider the inherent motion patterns when applying the division model, it can achieve the best results in terms of the mesh error, joint error, and motion smoothness. And also it has uh, much fewer processing times compared to the baseline one. And in these slides, we show the performance comparison with the SOTA video-based method on the human 3.6M and the 3DPW dataset. And our method significantly uh, outperformed the previous method. And here we show the in the wild video visualization. And for this example, we can see here, the previous method cannot capture the fast motion why our diff mesh can successfully respond to this faster motion. And for the next example, you can see here has some motion jitterings. And these two previous methods, they have some scaling inconsistency. And our diff mesh can generate the smooth and consistent human mesh sequence. For the summary, uh, first, we cover the video based 3D HPE, which is my work, Postformer. And Postformer has become one of the fundamental baseline for 3D HPE. And it leads to a theory of the subsequential works and adaptation. 
such as um, MNH Warmer, Mix ST, PSTMO. And for the image based HMR, uh, my work, Fitter and Potter, raise the concern of the model efficiency for HMR and provide our solution to show the, uh, the potential of utilization on the real world application. And for the video based HMR, our diff mesh is the first approach that considers the inherent motion patterns within the division model efficiently and effectively. And this novel design enhances the motion smoothness and the temporal consistency of the output mesh sequence. For our future work, since currently my work still focus on the single review, a single view, single person HB and HMR. And what we can do is the multi-view, multi-person HB and HMR, which would be more uh, much more challenging than the single scenario. And we can also do the downstream task, this kind of the real world application, such as uh, action recognition and prediction, motion analyze and generation, animation, VR, AI synthesis. And I'm excited to embrace the future opportunity and continuous pushing the boundary of the human-centered AI for computer vision. And here is my select publications, all published in the top tier conference and journals. And my citation has achieved 600 in just three years during my PhD journey. Any questions?